Welcome back, everyone. I'm Craig Butterworth, and this is Stuart Lancaster. Uh, Stuart, uh, you're on the track for AMP yep. right now. Uh, so you just passed the um, written for that, or is that in the works? So there's three written for it. You have uh, general power plant, and then you have airframe. Okay. Um, so what you do, there's three ways to go about it. You can be ex-military. You can be... You can go on to a course right through college or something like that, like a 141 school or something. Right. I forget what they have. I never went to it. Um, or you can do the 8610 way, which is where 30 months full-time yep. volunteering or employed. Um, and then you basically present your work experience to the FISDO. So I went to the Orlando FISDO. They sign off two copies of the 8610, and then you can enroll in you know a course like Baker's or I'm going to T-Blacks over in Tampa, Clearwater, okay. Tampa. And it's a two-week course, so the first week you knock out all three writtens, and then the second week is all checkride prep, or pardon me, not checkride prep, but basically the same thing, where you get with your DME, it's a whole day, go through everything, and then they sign the 8610, and you are good to go. Uh, so you were also a pilot as well, though, right? Yeah. And when did you get started flying? I want to say the first flights were probably around 2016, if okay. I remember in my logbook. Yeah, with my dad when he bought his little light sport yeah. and got his license in that. Those so. things are freaky little beasts right there. Good stick and rudder skills. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and what got you into mechanics? Um, so I started out tinkering with cars ever since I was really young when my dad had his old Maserati. Okay. Um, so I helped him when we were in Atlanta working on that thing because I had tiny hands. Yeah, I was just about to say little hands. You yeah, because I was only spots. like eight years old or whatever. So that yep. started out like that. And then uh, throughout high school, obviously getting in more and more into cars and owning a few cars myself and, you know, having to fix them. So I learned a lot through that. And then once I graduated, I went to a technical college, mm -hmm. basically got licensed and then started at Mazda and then went to Mercedes Benz. And yeah, I did that for quite a few years and then yeah. kind of wanted to change the scenery. So. But it's more fun working on planes as well, right? Depends. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends uh, what plane you're working on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what ratings do you have now? Uh, private pilot right now and then knocking out instrument here in January and then commercial probably by end of March, April. Okay. Yeah. And how many hours do you think you have roughly? 150, 160 right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you primarily go after the pilot's license for the mechanic skills, or did one feed the other in some way? In a sense, I mean, um, when I was in Canada working on heavy maintenance, like I was doing line maintenance, and we had a, everything from 27 up to 67 for Boeing. Okay. And then also like Dash A, Q400, ATR42, 72, Metros, DC3 Basslers, bunch yeah. of like, bunch of weird stuff because we were yeah. a contract company. So we were also signed with like FedEx, DHL, helped out Air Canada, WestJet, yeah. Air That's Transat. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so, would you say, would you recommend somebody that wants to get into aviation AMP as being, uh, you know, look at getting your pilot's license as well? I would say it definitely plays its part, right? Right. Because right. once you know all the systems and everything like that, being able to, it's, it kind of comes a lot easier. Right. Um, and if you have good hand eye coordination, then it kind of comes naturally to yep. fly. It's just the studying portion, but. That's again, everybody does that differently. So, yeah, a deeper understanding of those planes, I can see that, you know, specifically the electronics and everything that goes into it, all yeah. of the instruments, and then you're into the, the engine. And uh, yeah, not so uh, much uh, on GA stuff, but when right. you get into the heavy, like being on course for a couple weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And then getting back in, like it's different. If you're on line maintenance when you're doing like heavy, heavy work, right? It's not that bad. You kind of just heard like arriving the plane, departing the plane, addressing issues as the pilot's given to you, right? right? When it's heavy, like if you have a phase check, you know, it that takes potentially months depending on how things are organized. So it's a lot of work that goes into those. And you're thinking about going to the, you know, the airlines eventually, right? That's the plan, yeah. So what kind of route are you thinking of taking for that? Um, now that I kind of put the motorcycles on the back burner, uh, I'm going to be pretty much pursuing this year, just knocking out, like fully focused on just flying. So you used to race motorcycles. You kind of fed me into that one for a second there. Yeah, so you've yeah. been uh, racing for what ten years? No, I started in March when I got okay. out of, when I got okay. out of the oil field. Um, I got back in country in start of February, and then my neighbor used to race motorcycles. So he's like, "Man, you should really, you know, it's his original race bike." He's like, "You should take this thing to the track sometime." So I did that in March of 2023, and kind of just got hooked. Okay, and then. October of 2023 was my first race. That was at Daytona International Speedway where I got okay. second in two championships. 
And then I raced all of this year in okay. Wira motorcycle racing, and I got third in two championships throughout nice. the season. And then, we're, yeah, I mean, I just realized that my focus is not where it's need to be. Where yeah, it ne- needs to be. Pardon me. And then, uh, yeah, kind of just reshifting my focus to solely focus on my career and what mm-hmm. I have to do instead of just going to have fun. That's that's awesome. Can't I mean, do both. It gets expensive. No, it gets really expensive. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know. You can only have so many hobbies, and you've got to fund all of those hobbies. If you're not careful, it's hard to do to get, both. Yeah, you gotta <clears throat> you gotta manage it. <laughs> starts to get kind of crazy, though. You can, yeah. So you decided to go more like the apprenticeship route as far as the A and P side of things, right? That's what they, I, I'm just breaking it down. Where you yeah, know, the average Joe can kind of understand it, right? Yeah, so time served, if you would, to yeah. be able to get the uh, the the ticket. Definitely, and I mean, there's. That's the easiest way to go about it, unless you want to go to school for it. Right. But here's the thing: like, if you do go to school for it, sure, you can know all, the, you can read all the books you want until you really can fundamentally apply it and have a good understanding of like how to diagnose things, like what yeah. to expect. You know, then getting the hands-on experience plays a huge part. So I yeah. think like the thirty-month route, like, sure, it can take a lot of time, mm-hmm. but again, you're working with a good company, yeah. hopefully, and. You know, then the second you get your license, boom, here here you go. And now you're going to teach somebody else yeah. or move into a different position or a more important role. So. Well, it's that. I, I think that comes into hands-on. You know, hands-on experience is the best kind of experience. Yeah, um, 100%. You know, you can sit there and read a book about a Magneto all you want, mm-hmm. right? But until you've got your hands on one, you bust it open and you start seeing, okay, now this is how it is. And the book told me to put this screw in first, but if I put that screw in first, it blocks this other one, right? Yeah. You wouldn't know that until you've actually had your hands yeah. on hard metal, right? Yeah. Um, and there's an awful lot of people. I mean, you know, there's a school down at Kissimmee yeah. that does it. Um, I'm a big believer in, you know, time served and experience is really king. Um, Adam, of course, is is your mentor throughout this process. Not the whole thing, but yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, close some enough. of it. Some of it. <laughs> um, you know, he did it the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, he was super lucky. You know, his uncle was um, uh, an AMP and an and avid aviation working, enthusiast. Yeah. yeah. So he that that's the way that he managed to go through and. We, we had him on, and uh, if anybody's interested, Derek will make sure that there's a link to the other video that was for uh, Adam's experiences uh, somewhere around here. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just really, really great having having him on, and then also hearing that you're doing it the same way. Um, yeah. I'm, you know, you can take somebody straight out of the classroom. I'm just not sure that they're necessarily the person that I want to have working on the plane right out of the gate. Yeah. And I think it all depends on someone's mindset, right? Like, because you do learn a lot of the fundamentals when you go on course. Like I went to Red River Technical College back in Winnipeg when I was up in Canada working on stuff. Yep. And they teach you all that stuff. But until like there was one night where I was on the ramp and it was minus 40 outside north wind, probably going like 50, 60 kilometers an hour. And I got left with a propane heater to change a transient air bleed valve on the bottom of a yep. 737 engine, CFM 56. So, yeah, that sucked. Um, yep. Yeah, that sucked. But, I mean, it's like, again, like all that experience and stuff like that has helped me kind of just grow a lot and no. figure out, like, the path that I want to take. And I realized when I was up there doing that, I mean, I did it for about two years up there. But, I mean, I've been up to, like, Rankin Inlet in Nunavut babysitting yep. a 727 APU for a week. Like, it was nuts. Minus 55, sitting in a truck with, like, a broken heater core. <laughs> like, not ideal. Yep. And I realized, you know, it's probably better if I try to fly these things instead of fix them. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, I mean, you can do both for sure, but I think the better opportunity, if it presents itself, is to fly them. Uh, yeah, I mean, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, you're going to be taking your... Uh, uh, instrument check ride probably within the next six weeks correct yeah next four weeks probably okay. so my goal is to have that done by end of january and then pretty much commercial knocked out um by uh it's probably going to be april most mm-hmm. likely because i go on course march 3rd but i'm also on the wait list to get in a little bit earlier so okay hoping for a february date so i can focus and knock out the instrument in january and then february to march it's like time build um study and then knock out the license and then from there it's just all right, right into commercial, knock that out, and then CFI early summer or like immediately after that as soon as I can, and then go for double I, commercial multi, and then MEI by end of the year. So, okay. yeah. Awesome. 
Well, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah. Uh, I do want to take the opportunity to just remind everybody that we are doing the five hour uh, giveaway at 500 subscribers. Uh, that's going to be 500 subscribers and 500 entries. And you can go st right over to runwaylifegiveaway.com to enter, as well as like, comment, and subscribe to one of the videos that you've seen. Thank you very much and take care.